What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master 1 and welcome to my builds guide and unit review of Farkas, our latest Grantor battle unit. So he's an Axe Infantry unit with a preferred weapon in Corsair Cleaver. So this gives him minus one special cooldown which is already pretty rare for any kind of free to play Grail unit. So having this means that you can retaliate back with two cooldown bonfires. And then at sort of turn, if he's within three spaces of an ally, then he can grant the following to himself and the allies in three spaces. So he can give them and himself the plus 6 attack and defense buff and also the order status. The order status is pretty much the teleportation which you can get from air orders, ground orders and also from peony's dance. So the fact that he gives the orders buff to himself and his allies is really amazing because it is going to be improving the mobility of your team, especially in arena if you're a fruitable player. And giving the visible buffs on top of it is really good especially when these buffs are going to be in three spaces of Farkas, so that is a pretty good range and this allows him to support his allies without really using his own action. And then at start of combat, if his HP is at or above 25%, then he can get plus 5 to all of these stats himself and also gets a guaranteed follow-up attack, which is helpful because he's not fast. And finally, he gets the full tempo effect. So this allows you to completely ignore the guard skills of the enemies and also ignore any kind of special acceleration that they might have. So this allows him to retaliate back with bonfires that are going to be doing a lot of damage and he can also stop the special acceleration that the enemies can get from their skills like flash barrows, special fighter 4 and stuff like that. So overall this weapon is actually really solid for a free to play unit especially having minus and special cooldown and also having the full tempo effect. Looking at his stats, he does come with infantry pulse but doesn't really have the highest HP for it. Still it's workable and then he has got 47 base attack which is really really high with a super boon. And then he does have speed which is kinda slow but still he does get the extra speed from his weapon. And then he also has defense which is high and does have super boon. And his resistance is actually workable compared to a lot of the other slower axe infantry units who might not have this much resistance. So when it comes to his IVs, you're mainly going to be focusing on his attack. And if you have to ascend his asset, then defense could be a pretty nice super boon. And if you're running some kind of distant counter skill, then even resistance could be ascended. And when it comes to his fodder, it's not really all that great because we have gotten attack defense ideal 3 before and infantry pulse 3 has been present in the grail pool before. But recently it did get a tier 4 version with ascended said. So if you don't really want to fodder off the other units, then Fargus could be the one providing this fodder. But then again, it's not really any kind of new skill. And he can easily be compared to the other Axe Infantry units that we've got in the last couple of months, including Wintry Fuga and also Summer Donald. So both of these units have pretty much the same BST as Fargus, but the main difference is that Fargus has got both of them beat when it comes to the attack stat. And he also has a preferred weapon, which means that he can score higher than them in Arena. He can also be compared to another Grail Axe Infantry unit who is pretty popular as an Arena pick, or at least he used to be back when he came out. So we have got Hans here, and Hans does have a pretty high attack stat. He is faster than Farkas, but still, the speed that Hans has got is uh, not really all that fast by the modern standards. And he does get the true damage from his weapon with the damage reflection that he has got, so it allows him to just hit a lot harder and kill a lot of units. So I think that damage output of Hans is still going to be better, but overall Fargus is a higher scoring unit who also provides support to your team. As someone who has got a plus 10 Hans and has used him a lot in arena, I think that at this point if you're trying to build up an Axe Infantry unit, then Fargus is easily the best choice because he not only scores higher than Hans but also provides support to your team and that kind of mobility support is really really invaluable for arena, especially if you're a free to play player. Overall, Fargus is an amazing free to play unit and does end Book 7 freebies on a high note. Having minus and special cooldown and tempo on a free to play unit is really good with his high attack stat. And Fargus is easily one of the best free to play arena grail options as of making this video, who can score like a 200 BST unit and also provides amazing utility to his teammates. And because the support that he has got, it gives him a unique niche among the sea of infantry units that we have gotten in the free to play axe pool. And it works both for the PvE content like limited battles and also for arena usage. Now unfortunately Fargus is pretty slow so he's gonna get doubled a lot and he lacks any kind of innate damage reduction like Hans or Echidna which is gonna be making a bit more annoying when it comes to tanking but still he can definitely use many of the skills to increase his bulk and if you've already invested into many other Axe Infantry units then you might not really be incentivized in investing into Fargus with the merges 
Even if you don't want to invest in Farkas with Merges and Dragon Flowers, I think he can work perfectly fine for your Blazing Sword roster and many of the in-game content. So he could be built up as a 5-star unit and on a budget you can just give him Guard as the slot B skill because keep in mind that he does have the full tempo effect in his weapon and you can also run Steady Breath so that he can retaliate back with Bonfires which are going to be doing a lot of damage with his defense and again the full tempo effect from his weapon is really helpful because it allows him to make sure that he's not hindered by the Guard effect of the enemy units. And you can also run him as a buff bot by running him with Speed Resistance Link. And the Squad is Sacred Seal is pretty nice if you're trying to make use of Infantry Pulse. So this way he can fully buff up all stats of an ally while smiting them or repositioning them. So it can be helpful in many of the in-game content. And if you're trying to invest in him with more merges and Dragon Flowers and expensive skills, then you can definitely go the route where you stack up his attack and defense. Because he's a slower unit, so stacking up speed is not really going to be doing much. Attack Defense Unity can be a good slotty option with his two highest stats and he can also teleport around with his weapon so he's always going to be near his allies with that. So Attack Defense Unity does work out in that sense and then Guard 4 could be one of the options that he can run in the slot B because not only provides you the actual guard effect but the tier 4 version does give you 30% damage reduction and also minus 4 attack debuff on the enemy and it does have much much better threshold than the version 3 of the skill. So it could be a good option if you're trying to get some damage reduction and some defensive effects. And Attack Smoke 4 could be an option if you want to get the follow-up negation effect. So getting the follow-up negation along with the guaranteed follow-up attack of his weapon kind of makes it like an Omni Breaker. But keep in mind that any kind of faster unit with null follow-up is going to be completely ignoring any of that. And Steady Breath again is an amazing skill that could be run in the Sacred Seal slot so that he can retaliate back with bonfires. But if you don't really want to run Steady Breath in the Sacred Seal then I think that Running the Pled skill in a slot C is easily one of the best options because it just has really good synergy with the full tempo effect. By running Attack Defense Finish 4 and Special Spiral 4, you're able to get plus 10 true damage and also get the healing with the finish skill, which is good to keep him healthy for the HP threshold of his weapon. And if you're on a budget, then you can definitely run some other slotty skill or slotty skill, like Sturdy Surge from the Divine Codes, for example. Um, but Attack Defense Finish does work in both phases. And the Pled skill is going to be helping you get double bonfires in his player phase, which is going to be doing a lot of damage. And if you don't really want to get the double uh, bonfires in the player phase, then other slot C skills can definitely be run. But this is going to be making him really powerful with damage reduction piercing and the true damage and the healing that he can get. You can also run him with Fire Flood Boost 3 and whenever we get Fire Earth Boost 3, that could be run in the future because that is going to be increasing his defense but right now we only have Fire Flood Boost so it could be a good option if you're trying to get the guard effect from a slotty skill that can function in both phases while running Special Spiral 4 to pierce through the damage reduction of the enemies and again the Pled skill is an amazing option here because with Ether you're going to be able to charge it up a lot easily with the Special Charges effect and once it is set up with Special Spiral 4, you're always going to be retaliating back with Ethers that are going to be piercing through the damage reduction and also giving you healings. So if you want non-stop Ethers, then this could be the build for you. And if you're trying to build him up as a tank so that he can retaliate back to the ranged threats, then this encounter is something that you can run in a slot A. And you can also run him with Gambit 4 so that he can get a bit more damage reduction and be more bulky. And even though he does have a weapon that gives him minus one special cooldown, Gambit is still going to be a pretty nice option for giving you that 40% damage reduction and 10 true damage because there's really no other skill that he can run to get like 40% damage reduction. And because he's not fast enough, he can only make use of those speedy damage reduction skills. So Gambit pretty much ends up becoming a good option even though you're not going to be getting the max damage reduction out of it. Still, it could be run with Ether or Miracle and you can run a Pledge skill so that you can trigger Ether a lot easily. And again, Attack Speed Pledge is easily one of the best skills that you can run on Fargus because of the tempo effect in his weapon. The best competitive use of Fargus is definitely going to be in Arena as a score stick and also as a support unit. So if you're trying to build him up for Arena, then this is a bit more of a free to play friendly build because you can get level attack defense and infantry null follow up from the Divine Codes. And Rally Speed Resistance Plus is going to be his best assist so that he can fully buff up all stats of an ally and it can also be found in the Divine Codes. So you can just run the double ideal skills and make him function in Arena. On a budget you can also run him with Aether but Ruptured Sky is easily the best special that you can run on him because he can always retaliate back with it because of his weapon and the full tempo effect. This can definitely work out on a budget because you're going to be ignoring any kind of visible buffs of the enemies with the Lull skill which 
are going to be pretty common. And if you're going to be running some other free-to-play um, infantry units like Cyril, for example, then they do appreciate having the infantry null follow-up support. But if you're trying to maximize the scoring for arena usage, then you'll have to run all of the 300 SP passives. So for getting the best build that you can run on a melee focused Farkas is going to be this one. So again, Ruptured Sky is going to be the special and Fire Flood Boost is going to be giving you the guard effect. And Physical Null Follow Up is actually amazing for piercing through the damage reduction. And Fargus is slow, but not the slowest. So being able to get the Null Follow Up effect can be helpful against the ultra slow enemies that have guaranteed follow up attack. So you can just cancel those out. And he can run Infantry Pulse Force so that he can provide support to his teammates. And also pre-charges Ruptured Sky, which is going to be helping you just trigger it twice in a single round of combat in the player phase. And because we're running Infantry Pulse, any kind of boost 3 skill is going to be amazing with it, along with a Squad A Sacred Seal for getting more HP. So this is something that you can run, which allows him to provide support to your teammates while also getting the Guard Effect and the damage reduction piercing and null follow up at the same time. And finally, if you're trying to retaliate back to the range enemies, then distant counter skill is something you can run on the slot A. And with the distant counter build, I think that damage reduction is really helpful. So Gambit 4 could be an option that you can run with Ether as the high scoring special that can give you 40% damage reduction. Make sure to share this video with your friends if they're trying to build up Farkas. And if you did enjoy this video, then make sure to leave a like and a comment helps you tremendously. And if you really, really enjoyed, you could always support me directly by using super thanks down below or by becoming a YouTube member. And for more fave videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as your game if you kill Farkas in FE7. So with that, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.